A very cool feature of Postgres and some other databases as well is support for multiple schemas. So we're probably used to thinking about our databases in terms of how they are modeled, what the schema looks like. And typically with Prisma, we'd model that out in our schema.prisma file. With Postgres, we can have multiple schemas. So we might have something like a public schema, which has the typical info, the typical tables that would be in our database. And then maybe we would have something like an auth schema, which would hold tables that are relevant for authentication and users and that sort of thing. Multiple schemas in the same database allow us to have logical separation between different groups of tables, and they even allow us to apply different security rules to each of the schemas. So we might have certain read and write access rules for one schema and then a different set for another schema, and it gives us a way to separate things out in the same database. Now, if we want to work with multiple schemas in Prisma, there is a way to do that, and today we'll take a look at that feature. So let's start by getting things set up. I'm here in an empty workspace. I've got Prisma installed. Let's start by initializing Prisma and we'll get a database as well. npx Prisma init, we'll pass dash dash db and this will give us Prisma Postgres. I'll stick with US East one. Project name can be multi-schema. That's what I'll go with. All right, so the database got created. Everything is ready to go there. If we hop into the .env file, what we see is this database URL. And this points to our Prisma Postgres database. It's served by Accelerate. And in here in the Prisma directory, we get our typical schema.prisma. This is where we can start to model out multiple schemas. What we have to do first though, is opt into the preview feature. So up here in clients, let's call for preview features. We want multi-schema. And what this is going to do now is allow us to define which schemas we've got in our database and then mark each model with the appropriate schema. So what that looks like is this. In DB, we can have schemas and we can have something like public and auth. Let's work with those for now. That's a good use case for our initial look here. All right, so then down here, we've got a user model. Let's start with that. So model user and on that, we've got our typical ID, email, password, and since this is something that has to do with authentication, we can use the auth schema. Now, perhaps for your specific use case, the user model might fit somewhere else. It might fit in the public schema and other things to do with authentication might fit in the auth schema. But this gives us just a really quick way to look at how this works. All right, so then let's model out post now. So we've got model post, got ID on that, title content, and the schema for this can go to public. So the pattern here is that we're using this double at schema notation pointing to the schema that we've defined up here in our schemas array. And so what we get if we try to point something at a schema that doesn't exist, we're going to get this red squiggly saying that it is not found. So schema auth on that one. Now, the other thing to be aware of here is if we're using multiple schemas, we have to tell each model which schema it is to point to. So for example, if we took out schema, took out our double at schema, we'd get this error that says we have an error validating the model user because the schema attribute is missing. So just make sure to put your schema with the appropriate spot on there. All right, so let's now migrate our database. So down here, we're going to call for npx prisma migrate dev name can be init. Then let's look into the migrations and into the file that got generated. And what we see here is that we're creating a schema if it doesn't exist. So the idea here is that we always have the public schema. That's what comes by default in our Postgres database. But because we called for the auth schema to be another one for us, we have to actually create that schema if it doesn't already exist. All right, so let's start to get some data seeded in here. So in the Prisma directory, we can do that with a seed.ts file. And then I like to ask cursor, please provide some seed data for user and post. All right, so cursor is going to go and generate some data. We've got some users and we've got some post coming through there. I'll get rid of this line. That's giving us a red squiggly. We've got to specify in our package JSON file how the database should be seeded with Prisma. And that looks like this. Prisma will point to TSX against Prisma slash seed.ts. All right, so we should be good to go. MPX Prisma DB seed. All right, so the seed is complete. So if we were to go look at our data now in Prisma Studio, we don't yet have a way to switch between schemas. We can see the two tables that we've got, but we don't have that schema switcher. And I wanna take a look at that. So what we'll do is we'll open up our database with table plus. To do that though, we have to access our Prisma Postgres database through the PPG tunnel. And what that looks like is this. We can do npx at prisma slash PPG dash tunnel. So what this does is it goes and creates a secure connection for us to our Prisma Postgres database based on the connection string that we've got here in our environment file. 
what we get is a host name, which is just localhost. We get a randomly assigned port. And then for the username and password, that can be anything. So we can build a connection string up out of this, or we can just plug it into table plus to get access. So I'm going to copy the port number over here. And then we've got table plus that is loaded up here. We're going to connect to our local host. We're going to plug in that port number. We don't need anything for the username and password. We set SSL mode to disabled because the tunnel itself has that secure connection. And we don't want to have an SSL attempt from the client. Instead, we just use the security that comes through the tunnel. So we can test for this, make sure we're able to get green there. And we are, so let's connect now. Now, when we connected, we didn't specify a database, but we can do that with command K and we can choose the Postgres database. And now what we see is we're defaulted to the public schema, but the schema switcher down here also gives us the fact that we have an auth schema. So we can switch over to that. And notice the difference when we switch schemas. In the auth schema, we get our user table. That's where those two user records are that got created for us. And in the public schema, that's where our posts live. There's our post table there and we've got our posts. Now, one thing that we did not do in our modeling here is we didn't actually relate these together. So what we should have is posts belonging to a specific user. That's okay though, for the purposes of this demonstration, we don't really need that. But if we did have these related together, we would still be able to access data between the two schemas. So now when we go to make use of this, it's just a matter of using Prisma as we normally would. So for example, we can import the Prisma client. So import Prisma client, new up our Prisma client. And then when we call for our data, const users equals await, Prisma user find many, for example. We need this to be async here, this function. And then the same thing for posts. Even though post is in a different schema, we're still able to get access to posts directly on our Prisma client. So that's how we might go about defining multiple schemas in our database that we're working on. Again, making the definitions here that we have in our schemas array and then applying those schemas to particular models, that is going to be picked up in our migrations. When we do our migrations, we're going to then create schemas if they don't exist. Now, another spot where this comes into play is if we're using Prisma against a service that comes with multiple schemas. So databases like Supabase or like Neon, they have auth services which ship on a separate schema. So for example, the Neon auth service comes on a schema called Neon auth. You've got your public schema, which is just all the tables that you normally would work with. And then you've got a separate schema called Neon underscore auth. We can actually see it if we take a look at it here in table plus. I've got this Neon Prisma project that I was working on. And we've got neon auth as the schema down here, as well as the regular public schema. Right now, my public schema doesn't have anything, but neon auth has this user's sync table. So if we wanted to use this in Prisma, the workflow would look something like this. We'd be in our schema.prisma file, and we'd specify that neon auth is a schema to use. So neon underscore auth like that. Then we can create a model out of the table that's in neon auth. So for example, it has raw JSON, ID, name, email, and some other columns as well. We can recreate that in our modeling. Then we could say that model uses neon auth. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to use multiple Postgres schemas when you're working with Prisma. If you have any questions about working with multiple schemas, please let us know in the comments below, or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at Prisma on Twitter. Thanks for watching.